Hi everyone, my name is Julie and today we're finally back to Africa. We're gonna explore the biggest language in West Africa, a region home to ancient empires and civilizations. Sennu, and welcome to the Hausa language. Hausa is one of the most important languages in Africa, but surprisingly it's not very well known outside the continent. It is difficult to say how many Hausa speakers are there, because estimates vary greatly from source to source. I saw numbers ranging from 40 to 150 million, both first and second language speakers. Hausa is an official language in Nigeria and Niger, and it's also spoken in numerous countries around the West African region. The main Hausa speaking population is concentrated in the northern states of Nigeria and southern Niger, where Hausa is the main language of communication. But it is also an important language of international communication and trade well beyond the Hausa states. It is actually the second most spoken African language after Swahili, that is, if we don't consider Arabic. Actually, we should mention Arabic when talking about Hausa. First of all, because Hausa people are Muslim, they were under a strong Islamic and Arabic influence since the 15th century, so naturally their language has a lot of Arabic loanwords. But what is even more interesting, Hausa and Arabic are actually related. They belong to the same Afro-Asiatic family. It is a massive family, stretching all the way from Arabian Peninsula to the Atlantic Ocean and counting more than 370 million speakers. It includes incredibly diverse languages. Hebrew, Amharic, Somali, Ancient Egyptian, Maltese, Berber languages and of course Arabic and Hausa and many many others. We don't know exactly when and where Afroasiatic originated. It seems that around 10,000 years ago, it already started breaking down into smaller subfamilies. That's a very long time ago, but we still find common cognates among Afroasiatic languages, especially among pronouns, words that refer to body parts, family members, and other basic vocabulary. Researchers propose various Afroasiatic homelands, Middle East or somewhere along the Nile, or the Sahara, which by the way used to be a lush green region at the time. It is also not clear which branches started to break out first and how they are interrelated among each other. Hausa belongs to the Chadic branch spoken east, south and west of Lake Chad, hence the name, and Hausa is by far its biggest representative. Chadic is the biggest branch of the Afroasiatic family in terms of language number. It comprises some 140-160 languages, and that could indicate that maybe Chadic was the first to break out from the Afroasiatic trunk. Interestingly, when we look at genetics, we see a Y haplogroup R1b, which is mostly prevalent in Western Europe, being frequent among Chadic people and peaking among the Hausa. Of course, it is very unlikely that some settlers came from Ireland or something and spread their DNA in the middle of Africa thousands of years ago, but this might show some connection to North Africa and Middle East. Overall, genetically, Hausa are the closest to the Nilo-Saharan people, who also live around the same area of the continent, so possibly when Afro-Asiatic speakers arrived from somewhere, we don't know from where yet, some of these locals mixed with them and adopted their language, and that's how Chadic languages and people appeared. And Hausa actually has a legend which talks about kind of the same thing, but a little bit different, actually very different and about much later times. It's about the prince from Baghdad, Bayajida, who arrived to the Hausa lands, which were ruled by queens at those times, and married the queen of Dara, one of the Hausa city-states. Their seven sons then each ruled the seven city-states that made up Hausa land. These events and the rise of Hausa states occurred around 500-700 AD and this is when Hausa people start their history from. 
The house estates then rose and maintained dominance in the region thanks to the highly profitable trans-Saharan trade through which Hausa got not only the goods but also Islam. This is also a period when a high number of Arabic loanwords flooded Hausa, especially words relating to religion, law and trade, as well as numbers 20 and above. In the 19th century, Hausa land was conquered by the nomadic Fulani, who came all the way from the western shores of Africa and established the Sokoto Caliphate, which in 1903 was brought down by the British. The Fulani have since integrated into the Hausa culture and more than half of them speak Hausa as their first language. In the Nigerian part of Hausa land, English has been the major source of loanwords since the beginning of the 20th century and it still continues to be this way. The words of English origin are transformed to correspond to Hausa phonology, so sometimes it is hard to recognize them. There are two writing systems for Hausa, Ajami, based on Arabic script and used since around 17th century, and Boko based on the Latin alphabet and used since the beginning of the 20th century. Boko also refers to secular or non-Islamic, and there was a view for a long time that this word comes from English book, but it is more likely that it came from the native word meaning shame or fraud, as in being deceitful in comparison to Quranic scholarship. Nevertheless, Boko is the main writing system for Hausa, while Ajami is used in Islamic schools and sometimes for poetry. Looking at the alphabet, we quickly notice these hooked letters. These are the implosive and ejective consonants, pronounced by obstructing the vocal tract so you don't let the air out, like in Babewa or Kafa. There is also this letter, which, according to terminology, is called palatal approximant with creaky voice. It is better that we actually hear a native speaker pronounce it, because I really struggled with this one. We have two ways. The first one is ya, and the second one has apostrophe in front of the ya, and it's pronounced as ya. There are five rather straightforward vowel sounds, but these could be long or short, and that is not shown in the writing, so good luck. What's more important, Hausa is a tonal language, and the tones are also not shown in writing, so really good luck. In fact, most of the languages in West Africa are tonal, so Hausa doesn't really stand out there. But it's an Afroasiatic language, and some researchers actually think that Proto-Afroasiatic was also tonal and that it lost its tones in, for example, Semitic, but kept them in Chadic languages. Hausa has three tones, high, low and falling. High and low tone can happen on both short and long vowels, but the falling only occurs on the long, because historically it's a merge between high and low tones. Tones are important, vowel length are important too, as they can completely change the meaning, like in Gora, bamboo, versus Gora, large gourd. Well, of course, it's better to listen to the native speakers to hear the proper Hausa pronunciation. So, Alhamdulillah, kama yenda bil ite wan nambayani, shaka babu du wane abu nara yuwa wane na zwa da ampani, do kumarashin ampani akumai. Ama tu, da mwar zi kamata afara kala denda shini abunde ki da mwang al umma kaisi yi yana yin ira rishin da ada aki yi a shiwa nan shafi na tiktok yin to, yaskia ba uya muka yi wamuna nang kuma hayen zi idan aiki ya ta su muna dan tabawa ama ba uya muka yi ba muna nang kasang yana yin yin da harka ta muta ki wasana ta su wani wasana ta piya wasana ta so wa wasana tafiya to kusan in ce mumin tafi ne wasu su ma sun zo suna taka tasirawar kamar yanda yake kasancewa let's talk about the grammar hausa has two genders masculine and feminine which is very typical for an afroasiatic language and plural where the gender is not distinguished and this is about all the straightforward and easy things that there are in Hausa grammar. 
Yes, plural doesn't have gender, but to form a plural is a separate story. There are uncountable ways to do it, literally uncountable, because different researchers propose different pattern groupings, so some end up with 10, some end up with 20, some end up with 40. Yes, 40 different ways to form a plural. Hausa is an SVO language and the subject part here is particularly important. You see, when conjugating a verb, the tense, gender and number information is indicated in the pronoun and not in the verb, so the pronoun can never be dropped even when it is redundant. Like in this sentence, I is repeated. Notice, by the way, how there is no word AND to connect the two verbs. You can see here how with tense and aspect change the pronoun changes too, but the verb stays the same. There is a multitude of ways to manipulate pronouns to express different nuances. Even negation, which are particles ba and ba placed around the pronoun and verb, sometimes can attach to the pronoun. So it's a quite complicated system. And if you think that at least the verb does not change form, then I'm sorry to disappoint you. The verb changes form dependent on whether it is followed by a direct object, an indirect object, or nothing at all, or followed by something else. And of course, there are different tone and vowel pattern that direct how exactly this change happens. How the verbs have been divided into eight grades based on these patterns. And still, there are some verbs that don't fit in any of them. So there you have it. A language with a mysterious history, a very complex structure, influential present, and hopefully a bright future. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more. And check out my Patreon where my top tier patrons vote on the next language. And here are their names, by the way. So you can vote too. Thank you so much for watching and see you in our next exploration.